The back of the yard was one of the first gangster ass neighborhoods and birthplace to a lot of its own homegrown street gangs. Let's get into this video. In a city known for its fearsome super gangs, criminal enterprise like the mob, gangs, Chicago has its own culture from graffiti on the walls to how the south side and the north side are separated. In Chicago, it's where you're born that defines who you are, not your race. This is gang life. Cartel got me working for the big faces. Federally got my car full of brick cases. Hit the pin with a grin, there ain't no faking. I was picked to my back for my shoelaces. God out, should have seen the look on their faces. All jealous cause your boy stacking hella paper. Hey, what's up? My name's JC. I am Ron Strong. If you're new to my channel, make sure to subscribe, hit that bell so you don't miss nothing. If you're part of my crew, mi familia, mi raza. You already know. Suan Sala Suburban. We're taking a ride of 51st and Wood. <laughs> What's up, guys? We're talking today about the back of the yards. This community, a lot of people used to say that way back in the day, this community was kind of like far away from the city, kind of like pulled away. You know, there was a really big stockyard that was open there years ago and a lot of uh, Irish immigrants, Italians, Polish moved in that area to to work. But once it closed down in the in the 70s it became you know really bad poor area. And in poor areas there's always organized crime and there's always gangs. It's given birth to a lot of its own homegrown gangs because back in the yards is like I said a little bit you know out there on its own sitting and you know uh, for a long time there was only two organizations there that kind of like you know ran shit for a while but then more gangs started moving in but it's a hard area to be around and it's a hard area to live in the Latin souls were founded here in 1962 Yes, it is a Latino gang. And at the time, their really only enemy were the Saints that were right across the street. Another Latino gang. When you have two Latino gangs competing to be the big powerhouse of the area, there's gonna be lots of war, there's gonna be lots of shootings, lots of death, and a lot of just bad stuff happening. By the 80s, when all the gangs were, you know, coinciding with folks or people, you know, switching to one side or the other to try and, you know, create some kind of structure. Um, the back of the yards kind of sat in the back seat for a while because there really wasn't that many gangs in that area back then. There was four at the most. They kind of had just big turfs and just, you know, ran the back of the yards. You know, saints and uh, Latin Souls being some of the founding, founding members from there, you know, even um, City Knights. Uh, there's, there's gangs that have been there for, from the get-go, from the start. By the 1980s, a lot of the Latino gangs were moving in from like, you know, Pilsen and other areas of Chicago, the 26 were moving in, the Rasas were moving in, the SDs were on 51st and Wood. You know, the City Knights be went from being a party crew into a gang. So at first, you know, into the 90s, the Land Souls actually were pretty much at peace with, with most. With most organizations, I mean, I remember seeing them all the time on 51st and Wood. You couldn't even tell who was a SD and who was a, who was a Land Soul because there was just so many of them out there. And they were always out there. They were always down that street on that courtyard where that school is at. And there were just, there was, there was a lot of them. By the mid 90s and when they started to actually have beef 
with the SDs, with the Rasas, and war just kind of took off. I always look at it like this, like if if a uh, organization, gang, whatever you want to call it, is popular, people are, people are going to hate on you and they're going to either want you to come over to them or or get the fuck out the way. You're you're like an enemy, you know. And this and this neighborhood is only a mile by a mile and a half long. And according to all the records that I was looking at, in a 3-year period, 150 people have been shot. And that's small of an area. That's that should say something right there. You know, over over time the souls have lost like smaller hoods like you know Gage Park, Marquette Park that they're called more like satellite camps you know they they have some of their members living and moving out living out there but they're they're not really putting in the effort to like get that section going or anything but it's said that they still have you know the same turf in the back of the yards and that they have hundreds of soldiers to this day you gotta one thing that I'm gonna really, really like clarify on, on this area in Chicago, back of the yards. So this is an area that's that's mixed with blacks, Mexicans, um, whites, and like uh, some Puerto Ricans. Um, and this is an area where the blacks don't don't act. The, usually in Chicago, the black gangs really don't get involved with the Latino gangs. Like if there's a, an area where they're close to each other, they just really, they don't bang with each other. They don't gang bang with each other. And in this area, particularly in the back of the yards, the blacks bang just like the Latinos. Like they're going back and forth. The GDs with the uh, Stones and the Saints with the GD. I, I mean, it's 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 non-stop. And they're like straight, straight banging hard. And in other areas of Chicago, you really don't see that because blacks just, they're they're on their own shit. Like they're, they're making their own money. They're, and, and it's like segregated to that point where they really don't, they don't even play no mind. Like they don't, they don't care what you are. You know what I mean? Like, they're more on that money shit, but in that area, in the back of the yards, I don't know what it is. Always, 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 the blacks be banging just as hard as with the Latinos. The blacks have always banged hard with each other. I'm not, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying them gang banging with the Latinos in that area. They go, yeah, they go hard. They go, they, they get, they gang bang just like us. So that is one, one area where you gotta be really, really careful what you are. Where, you, where, where you're at and who you're around because it's a highly highly gang infested area and I know they're trying to like fix it up tear it down whatever but back of the yards is always gonna be the back of the yards man it's, it's a crazy area it's a crazy place but like I said it's got a shitload of history those bridges or that graffiti those cars everything that happens in that area and the houses in the back of the businesses is all history of Chicago, man. And it is what it is, man. Sometimes it's not good, sometimes it's not bad. Uh, the land souls, like I said in the past, you know, I've been around them, I've been in their hood. They've been around for a long time and, and they have, you see the, the back of the yard is more like family. I've done a video on the Saints where a lot of these Saints, their family members have been living there for over 10 years. Same thing with the, with the, with the uh, Latin Souls. You know, um, they've been there for a very, very long time. So the people in their area love them. They respect them. And that's why they say that to this day, they still have hundreds of, of soldiers on the streets. That's because even though you know, this land so 68 years old, he retired and he's, he's still living there though. So he still has eyes and ears and still talks to people and still, you get what I'm saying? So it, it goes down, you know, through age and it gets older and, and people respect it. And that's what it is, point blank. My name's JC. I am Ron Strong. Hey, don't judge nobody. Stay in your lane. Live savage and remember. You only have one life to live. Don't gang bang, don't use drugs, and don't catch the corona.